Yeah, when coils are even, as you can see, there's a reason for that, so that when I get ready to build my loop and my coils are even, then I'm not going to set myself up to get my hand caught in the rope. And if there's one sticking out four inches, I can hang it up on the brush or a gate. And the, what I've seen mainly is in corrals is when this wreck happens, not as much out in the brush. So, we all know there's a hundred ways to put your rope on a saddle. And I, as you know me, I don't really care, but I, this is what I do. And it's just a, call it a habit. <laughs> Well, if you ride up to some guy's outfit and you got your coils five different diameters, he's going to remember to hand you the nut bucket. So, just a little hint. But I want to talk about a young man named Tom in France sent me a real nice letter. And um, I think it's pretty darn neat that a young man has got the wherewithal to pursue this, plus write a letter instead of sending a video or a text or whatever the hell you do. So anyway, Tom, thanks for that kind of uh, information, and I will be looking forward to seeing you when we get over to France. Now, Will and Jay in Australia, Jay and Will, I gotta tell you, your rain chains are gonna make it. And Will, something I found out that you probably already know, because you know more history than I do, is that the code talkers, the Navajos, when they got trained before they went to war, when they got done at Camp Pendleton in California, they were shipped to Melbourne. And they were trained there, and then their first action was in New Guinea. So it's pretty cool that the, all them young Navajos were in Australia. So there you go. And Pete and Jen, hope you got some rest after we got out of your hair. And uh, take care. So what I want to talk about today is the things you need to have on your horse, as in horsemanship and handle, so that you can work cattle smooth and quiet. And um, just to save one email, I can tell you, the reason I'm showing this is because there's days when you can, in fact, do things nice and slow and smooth, and that's what I prefer. Now there's days out in the pasture when you got to kick it up to 35 to bend them or whatever it is you did because you weren't paying attention. And that's fair. Everything's fair in the pasture. But I really don't want to make a video of me running across a pasture. It just doesn't suit me. So there you go. But what you got to have is you want to have a horse. I'll give you an example why I'm making this video is that when I was a month or so ago down there in Texas, Louisiana, we were working cattle quite a bit and um, three of the guys that were there were asked to get off their horses and the reason they were asked is because their horses wouldn't stand quiet and they were slinging their heads and they were spinning around and walking all over the place when we were trying to work cattle and all that did was slow up the works so the boss just told them to get off and then that solved the problem and things got quiet again so there's kind of the moral I'll give you the moral now and then I'll show you the reason so what I got to have on my horse, the big deal that I use a lot is side passing and leg yields because I'm moving cattle forward. So if I, if I need to move over and move my entire horse and I'm staying in line with the camera, it's better than this. I'll show you what not to do. Turn and then ride over here. Okay. It's less impact on a cow if you can just stay in this mode and the horse, his ears will prick towards the cow and you can handle your livestock better. And I keep putting pressure on and pressure off. Okay, so when he backs, you need to back straight. Okay, so now when you're moving, you need to walk forward but yet you need to move over. Or you may need to move over the other way. And that's where this comes in about horsemanship. Now there's times when I've, it happens in a corral 
where I just need to swap ends and I want my horse to walk his rear end around and not be a big impact on the herd. If I walk in a circle, I'm going to impact the herd. So the point is to be as subtle as you possibly can moving your horse around. And now just for the sake of knowing, whenever you do this on these horses that are genetically set up for working cattle, most of them you just got to stay out of their way. The horse knows how much pressure to put on a cow. He knows where to be. And a human, if they're doing all of this stuff, they're late. You're never going to be quick enough. So that's why it's important to have all this horsemanship, lateral movements on your horse. There's a reason for it. Now what I'm going to do is because I'm bringing back a style of roping that goes way back and I want to reintroduce it for one reason I want to keep it alive and the other reason I, it's practical and what it is is laying cattle down horseback. Because back in the mission days, I'll go all the way back there, the cattle were five years old, weighed 1,200 pounds at least, and they were longhorns typically. So you didn't run down and tail them down. You learned how to rope them and lay them down on the ground. Two examples of why you laid cattle on the ground, one was to lay them down behind the cook shack so the cook could cut their throat. And the other one is during the annual roundup, which was the law in California, you had to have a roundup once a year and all the reps came from all the other ranches. That's where the Fandango came from after the roundup. So when you were holding Rodier and an, a man appointed as the judge, he was appointed by the ranchers. They knew he was an honest man. He was blessed by the priest and he went out and was the judge of the roundup. And it was called the Juez del Campo, country judge. So if there was any kind of a, a cow or steer or calf that nobody could agree on, it was roped from, you might have 500 head out there. It was roped and it was brought, led to the judge. The judge didn't go to the critter. They brought the critter to the judge. So they had to walk it around the herd and lay it down in front of the judge for him to look at the right side. Then they could roll it over horseback and he could look at the left side. And then he decided whose brand went on it. And typically, it worked out even. If you can imagine going to 20 different ranches, if there was a, nobody knew what to do, he usually let the ranch that you were working on put their iron on them. But he inspected them first. That's why I'm holding together this tradition of laying cattle down. Not to mention, for those of you that have had to tail a lot of cows down, which I have, it's not much fun at all. Okay, now there's people that choke them down. Well, if they got anaplas, you just killed them, okay? So laying a critter down by roping a hind feet and front feet after you've headed it, or before, that's a, a more humane and better way to lay cattle down. So that's going to be introduced this year as an event. I'll just give you a hint right now. So we'll get the roping dummy and go from there. Okay, folks, for roping cattle, I'm just going to show you a couple of the shots to give you the basics. And if you have a ragged out nylon, which this is not quite that ragged out, but you can set your trap up in front of and or behind the front feet and or the back feet. Now that's how big the loop is. This is not Great Basin big loop roping. There's a coil with it to get it there. You slide it in and the rope is standing up because it's nylon. Okay, when you're doing this kind of roping, if the right front foot has been caught, you want to catch the right hind foot and or both hind feet. So that loop, depending on whether the header backed it up or pulled it forward, you could get a gift out of the deal. But the main thing I want to get you to understand if, is that you've got to lean the rope against the leg. Because if, if you just lay it flat on the ground, it makes it harder to, to get it caught. The biggest mistake I see is rope and feet is the loop's too big. 
So it's standing up, and if the left hind foot's the next one to move, he got it. Now if you'll notice, I try not to swing a lot because the more you swing roping, it's no different any good team roper will tell you that the farther you go, the worse you get. And what it means is that the more you swing and the longer you take, you're not going to get any better. Now folks, what I'm going to throw is just a backwards loop. This isn't a trick, it isn't nothing fancy, it's just tossing the rope behind the hind legs. And this comes from the old days when they roped the grizzlies, they were able to get out of the way quicker if their horse was facing away. So you would just toss it like that and you can hang it over the back. Critter backs up and you got a hind leg or two. Now on that note, when you heal a rope and feet, the thing that people make a mistake, they lose the feet a lot because they don't raise their arm. Now I'll show you what I mean. But before that, while I'm on a roll here, if you have a poly or a riata, which means it's a very soft rope, you have to hang the loop on the back. You use a bigger loop because that's what they're designed for. I put one coil with it and I hang it over the back. Now I've got a trap there so what I would do is I would ride to it and coil. It's going to walk forward into my trap up there and here's the part you got to remember. You raise your hand so you can keep your loop up. Alright so my hand is up in the air. Now Watch my hand, go ahead and go. I'm sliding the rope. Now I'm letting the rope slide through my hand while I go to the horn. And that's how you dally to keep a leg. That's a big part of this deal. So the flank shot is the highest, highest percentage there is with a poly or a riata. Now there's, in this, in this style of rope, and there's three man, two man, and one man. But the, the main thing I want to show today is to start learning how to lean your rope on them feet so you can set a trap. Now, all you got to do is pretend like it's already headed. And on that note, if I'm in a corral or a pasture, I'd, a lot of times I don't rope them around the neck. I rope them by a hind leg and then I just go across the pasture with them and slow them down. So you don't always have to rope a cow around the neck to, to lay her down. So if I catch a right hind leg then my partner will just come up and catch a right front. So there's your trap for the front feet. And of course if you want it behind them you would throw backwards again. That's your highest percentage, throwing backwards. Now if it's a two-man roping and you have to neck it, so, I've, so I'm going to neck it, and then my partner catches a hind leg and I don't want it to be pulled by a hind leg and a neck. I don't want to choke it to the ground. So what I try to do is I'll set a trap for the front feet. Now the highest percentage trap there is, if it's roped around the foot, then I'll get around in front of it. And my partner's holding it still by the hind foot. Okay. So I just lay my rope down right there. Now I take off and get away from the cow. Roll my coils. Feed the rope. Get my rope down. And there's my trap. If it turns away from me, it's probably going to step over it. If it walks forward, which is up to my healer to set up, it's going to walk forward. So, Chris, if you would just set it over the rope there. Okay, that's good. Thanks. Now, so it walks over the rope, and my partner's got it. 
The trick to this deal is to not get too far away. You'll notice if you get way out here too far, it'll pop off. So what I do is I stay close like this and my partner pulls backwards and that rope's going to slide down and pick up those two front legs. And when the legs go off the ground, the cow is going to fold up like a lawn chair. So those are the basics of what's going to happen in reintroducing the California style. Now I'll mention the differences again. Is that the, the Great Basin roping to me is famous for the big loop, heading and healing, and they are proficient at using the tip of the loop. Then they'll hold their hand up and let a cow or a critter take the slack out of it. It's, it's, it's like an art form. It's beautiful to watch that style of roping. Okay, then we all know that you can do an overhead swing and team rope, basically team rope a cow and do what you're going to do. All right, now there's the California style, which incorporates all the little shots that a lot of people think are trick roping, but they actually have a practical use. And so if you want to call it the California style, that means we're going to lay the cattle down horseback. That's, that's going to happen in Oregon when we go up there to Kim Ewald's place. So I hope that starts to open the door. And people, that if you're interested in it, this is how you start is by learning how to set those traps. Thank you.